You know, if you wasn't wearing any collars, I would think you're just a dried up dog turd. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Double A coming at you yet again with probably another piece of plethora of useless knowledge that I have. So, uh, plaster of Paris. Many of us who smelt metals and forge metals have come across this plaster of Paris sand mix early on thinking that it's a cheap form of refractory, in which it is. Uh, it just doesn't last long and it crumbles to nothing. And some of us have been dumb enough to try to put water in it and make it work again and uh, well it worked about as well as the high security team that was put in charge of watching over Jeffrey Epstein question is why does it crumble and it's not because of the sand and it is because it's plaster of Paris so does it make a good um, refractory well yes of course it does it takes heat very well it insulates very well and it's very reflective it makes awesome if it just didn't crumble so how can we stop it from crumbling? Well, we can't, so I'm going to tell you why it crumbles. See, Plaster of Paris is known as calcium sulfite hemihydrate. It is created when you take gypsum and you heat it up to about 1200 degrees, okay? And then, then it converts over to calcium sulfite hemihydrate. I don't know what gypsum is, just go with me. So once that heats up, it goes through another molecular change and turns into calcium sulfate anhydrite which is not soluble in water it loses its chemical bind bound water completely and it just crumbles kind of like Joan Rivers face after about the 20th um, surgery you know it just didn't work anymore so it's called burnt dead plaster because you can't do shit with it or can you so at this point in time it's not soluble in water but it is still calcium sulfate and a hydrate. So can it be used for anything at that stage? Well, it's a possibility, but I don't know. It's possible it can't. See, it can still go through a molecular change and turn into calcium oxide. C A O. But don't get as excited as I did saying that because the yield would probably be so minimal. I don't know that it'd be worth even plausible to go around and scrape up every bit of unusable piece of sheetrock from construction sites just to try to get you some calcium oxide to make some Roman concrete or some type of uh, calcium based refractory. But as I said, I don't know. It's a possibility that it can be used as a, uh, a grog. The center of it's not going to get as hot, so as you go through the refractory, it doesn't heat it. So it, it would have to be like a cast refractory. It would be solid. <clears throat> but I don't know, guys. Um, that's going to take some testing. There's two research papers I read, uh, skimmed through. And... One says that you, in order to drive sulfur off, you have to heat it up to a high temperature. Another one says that you have to have a heat it up inside of a uh, ball mill and pulverize it out. So, I don't know. We'll, we'll give it some tries. We'll give it some tests. And um, if I could just ever get this thumb removed from my rectum and do something, we might be able to figure something out. But don't take my word for it. I'm not a chemist in no means. I mean, let's face the facts. I did poison myself with copper sulfates. And I think that pretty much proves that I don't have a PhD in anything, but um, pretty honest dumbass. That's the only PhD I got. So, in my honest opinion, will calcium, it's calcium, it's good for the bones and the hair and the teeth. Anyhow, will uh, plaster of Paris make a good refractory? I don't think it's going to do it, dude. I think it's going to continue to crumble. Um, but you know what? I got some plaster of Paris. I'm going to make some little small pucks, and I'm going to burn the shit out of it and turn it, it turns into burnt dead plaster and see if I could use that as a grog within um, either Portland cement or kitty litter. I'll probably do both, which is sodium betonite. I think it's sodium betonite. Yeah, sodium betonite, because I can't get my hands on calcium betonite. Anyhow, um, and if those crumble in extreme heats, then we know that it's probably converting off to uh, calcium oxide. So it will be a way to 
get your hands on calcium oxide, which is expensive, but like I said, it's going through about three different molecular changes from gypsum to plaster of Paris to copper sulfate and hydrite, okay, four changes, to, uh, to calcium oxide. So you're losing stuff in between every one. Therefore, it, the yield's not going to be that big. I don't even think it's going to be feasible. You know, I think you would have a better chance of convincing me that politicians are going to save this world. So with that, I say this. Be well, be safe. I love peace, chicken grease, all that jazz. And I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Love you. Mean it.